Rowing companies in Maersk Training have piloted a five-day enhanced well control course that is simulator-based. This course targets experienced rig personnel who have already completed at least one standard well control course. So if you take somebody who's been in the oil field for 10 or 15 years and they've gone to well control school two or three, four different times, they're going to reach a certain level of learning and training. There's a benefit in moving beyond that by implementing things like the simulator. We bring them in the very first day and make them take the test. So we'll do some basic review with them for a couple hours and then they take the test. And then the rest of the week, it's just half the time in the simulator, half the time in the classroom, where the classroom content is more advanced subjects, um, more practical field things that you see out there, more issues that you run across, complications, things of this nature. Maris Training's technical instructors have experience on drilling rigs. They're able to draw on this experience to make the simulations as true to life as possible. Because you're not going to be able to set up a real scenario for a drill crew unless you've actually done it yourself. You actually have to take people that have the field experience to be able to make it as realistic as possible. Here you got the realistic stuff, the cyber chair, uh, equipment, you got your BOP function on the screen just like deep water. Uh, it's more hands-on and more realistic. It's like you really at work. Maris instructors observe students conducting simulation exercises from another room to evaluate their performance. So we have the cameras and we have the microphones and we're able to see what they do and why they do it. Um, and then we can debrief from a technical viewpoint on what they should have done over here, what they did wrong. And then also the human factors instructor can debrief on how their communication was, how their teamwork was, um, maybe where they should have come together as a team. And Maris Training employs two full-time human factors instructors. Both instructors previously taught human factors or crew resource management at NASA. So in that industry, we do crew resource management is kind of intertwined with everything we do. I think that's where the oil and gas industry wants to go. It's going to take a while to get there. So the experience that we bring, um, that I bring from NASA allows us to get there. Like human factors is all the stuff you do on a day-to-day -day basis, and they call it sometimes non-technical skills. It's the, or soft skills, it's the communication. How do you talk to somebody? Teamwork, how do you work with somebody? Leadership, how do you lead somebody? What do you do to make your team strong? Decision making, how do I make up a decision? And then being aware of what's going on, so your situation awareness. It's everything you do on a daily basis that's not that technical knowledge. And everybody is using them all the time, whether you're in oil and gas, aviation, space, whether you're in the office and you're an admin or in public relations, you're constantly using human factors without even realizing it. And there are right ways and there are wrong ways to use all of those skills. Like the technical component of the training, the human factors component is split between classroom work and simulator exercises. It doesn't resonate with them to just sit in a leadership class all week and be taught about theory and just information they want to do. They're very hands-on industry. So they need to figure out how do I take this information on leadership and tie it back to my job. So if you do it with the technical stuff that they're used to, then they realize, oh, when I am doing this particular task, this is who I need to talk to. This is how I need to communicate. This is what I need to tell my team to do. During the simulator exercises, Maris instructors show complications such as radio malfunctions at the students to put their human factor skills to the test. You start feeling the heat. Uh, you feel the pressure just like if you was out there on the rig and a true event comes up. I mean, there's a lot of stress there and they put it on you to help you make better decisions and recognize the right thing to do. In the end of the week, what I want them to understand is you can't do your job if you don't do the human factors stuff correctly. And I think this course really offers that to them. Um, by the end of the week, they realize that even the smartest guy in the room can still fail because he's fallen at one of the human factors pieces. IADC is in the process of developing an accreditation program for this type of enhanced wall control training. Like the course at Maris Training, the IADC program would focus heavily on simulations and human factors. So the course is designed is uh, to be 
something that's different than the standard wolf control course that people repetitively take over and over again. Something to keep them interested, to challenge them, and give them some experiences they hadn't had before. Part of the course will be in simulation, some will be in class of work, and it'll be a combination of human factors training, uh, real scenarios, and then debriefs in relation to those scenarios around human factors and how they interacted and, and, and how they solved the problems that they were faced. Thank you.